let me set the stage for you. You've just found yourself in some kind of dark cave out in the fields. There's a few enemies around for you to take care of, and once you do so, a chest spawns. What's inside the chest? As you open it, your mind races with thoughts of incredible treasures, wild upgrades, insane power-ups, until you finally pull out a red rupee. The world's most, oh, that's neat kind of reward. Worth much more than a green rupee, but not quite as important as a dungeon-specific item, the red rupee is perfect for supplying players with just enough incentive to feel a small ounce of pride. Collecting every green rupee was a challenge on its own, but to take it up a notch, I wanted to go back and see how fast I could locate and find a red rupee in every Zelda game, or at least every Zelda game that has a red rupee. Meaning that thanks to Zelda 1 and 2's erythrophobia, we'll have to begin with A Link to the Past. Last time we took the role of the hero Unk, but I've realized that name's a little silly, so everybody, please welcome Gunk. Making my way out of the house like usual, we couldn't rely on just cutting some stinky grass for red rupees, we were gonna have to get slightly more serious by robbing from royalty. Infiltrating the castle and on the way to rescue Zelda, I took out every guard I came into contact with. Unfortunately, I realized if they fall off the map, they're probably not gonna throw their wallets at me on the way down. Even worse, robbing from royalty didn't pay off. At this point, I was pretty certain I would have to to wait a while until I discovered a chest of some sort out in the world, but to my surprise, the sewer rats were more loaded than the blue collar guards, netting us our first red rupee. Now while I forget about saving Zelda and leave her in the sewers, I figure this is a good time to mention I'm starting the timer the moment we boot into our save file and ending it as soon as we find the red rupee. So if you know any glitches or fun ways to get one faster than me, I love to hear how. Also subscribe. Link's Awakening DX is an interesting one because as far as I know, the only place you can find some reds is through the trendy game shop which costs 10 rupees to play. So I head down to the beach and grab my sword with the intention of mowing lawns and earning enough money to gamble it all away. I also fell on a piece of heart, which isn't worth anything, but it is red. Once I had the money, I went straight for the trendy game where after a couple horrific tries, I scored our second red rupee, and then I spent the winnings on a Yoshi doll. For those curious, Link's Awakening on the Switch is really no different. I played out the exact same sequence of events, but because the trendy game isn't dog sh in this one, it was over and done with pretty fast unlike Ocarina of Time. Previously, it took only a classy five seconds to pluck a green rupee, but add a value of 19 more to your currency and suddenly it's unfindable. I explored around checking every hidden location and chest that I remotely knew about, even searching the Lost Woods for like nine seconds before I got scared and bored. Eventually, I decided my best bet was gonna be entering the Deku Tree. So once again, I chopped through grass, took down enemies, opened chests, still no red. I found the Slingshot, broke through the cobweb, bullied a plant, solved some puzzles, took down more enemies, broke through another cobweb, bullied some more plants, and before I knew it, I had fought and killed the boss of the dungeon, Goma. An entire tree had been liberated, kind of, and still no red. It wouldn't be until after I soiled myself talking to a woman and traversed the entirety of Hyrule Field before I could climb onto the castle's front gate and snag a few invisible red rupees. Ocarina of Time may have taken a little while, but at the very least, I knew of a few guaranteed locations once I got to leave Kokiri Forest, and that was not at all the case for Majora's Mask. I could tell you where a silver rupee was, but shockingly, that's different from Red. A couple nightmare tragedies later, and we're in Clock Town, the land of opportunity. The first thing I tried was the treasure chest minigame, but after making it with seconds to spare, all I got was some Deku nuts. Goodbye. My next chance was the Deku Flower minigame. There were no red rupees on any of the platforms to grab, but I was hoping if I collected all of them, I'd get one for my prize, and I have never been so unhappy to be overpaid in my life. I even tried to save an old lady from getting her bag stolen, but my stupid little twirls weren't helping, and the guard sure as hell wasn't doing sh**. I figured there might be some chests in the sewers, but to get down there, I of course needed to play hide and seek with this group of children. I'm no professional hide and seeker, but it's gotta be an illegal move to soar away with a chicken and hide behind a guard. Oh, so creepy guy stealing from old lady is all good, but now holy shit, a tree stump? Get behind me, kid! Eventually, I caught all the members and was granted access underground, which only really led to me watching the moon cry. Join the club, buddy. The next day and a half was spent trying anything that I possibly could, from bank depositing to mini games, from evicting to more mini games. Pretty much my only option was to progress normally and turn back to Human Link so I could leave Clock Town, the land of adversity. And the final method I came up with, I was actually kind of proud of. Out in the fields, there's a big bird known as the Tagubi, and when it hits you, you'll lose your rupees. By allowing it to smack me with enough coin in my pockets, I was able to manifest a very well-deserved red rupee. 
and then he stole it. Luckily, there was a chest 30 feet away with another one inside. Thank God, get me out of here. Oracle of Ages and Seasons have a very bizarre rupee setup. There's regular and small versions of each one of them. Some of them are the same color, but have different values entirely. The bright side is that because red rupees equate to only about five in these games, they shouldn't be too terrible to locate. So let's tackle both of them together. Oracle of Seasons begins with utter disaster as Din is stolen away. Oracle of Ages begins with utter disaster as Nehru is stolen away. I'm mostly just worried about the monkeys, man. Anyways, anyways, 50 seconds after acquiring the sword, and, and another, another red, red rupee, rupee has been collected. collected. Thank god they didn't make three of these games. I don't think anyone has ever found a red rupee in Wind Waker, so let's be the first. It's Link's birthday, and his sister, who can clip in and out of reality, got us a telescope. I know she's only nine, but come on, can't spare me a quick 20? I made my way to grandma's house my fault. This place has got a lot of really flattering, memorable pictures, but notice anything off about this one? Cause I'm just now realizing that's because Granny took this photo and sort of slapped herself in between using a separate photo of her hanging six inches from this one. That is so damn funny. I left Grandma's house. Not my fault. Suddenly, pirates showed up, presumably looking to steal all the red rupees before I could get the chance. So I looked all around the island and broke just about every pot, which very tragically only led me to a... I gotta get the f*** out of here. The pirates were getting closer, but this guy left his door unlocked, meaning everything inside is free game. And who would have expected our old friend Big Green to help lead me to a secret chest holding a red rupee? So what you're saying is I could have yoinked this one in about 30 seconds. Next up is Minish Cap, Gunk's greatest adventure yet. Zelda arrives extremely early in the morning, waking Link up in the process. Before we can go to the town festival, I've got to bring this sword to Hyrule Castle. Make sure you don't lose this extremely important delivery. Oh, I won't lose it, but I am going to forget about it the second I find it. Hey, a red rupee. Now we've got an interesting one, the original Four Swords. See, I've never actually played this game because it was already hard enough to get multiple friends with link cables to play Four Swords Adventures, but getting four individual copies of the game on top of everything else, not to mention actual human friends, it was impossible. Fast forward 15 years, and I've still got the same problem. But there were previously quite a few people upset that I included the GameCube game over its Game Boy sibling, so nepnep1453, this one's for you. After just a bit of setup, I was able to get the game going with my definitely very real friend. Some would say my only friend. And as we begin the first stage, we are now done with the first stage. I think the game knew the challenge it truly took to get here, so I'll take it. And just because I can, I also grabbed a couple red force gems over in Four Swords Adventures. Now everyone can happily discuss which game is better and why it's this one. Twilight Princess has a zero to green pickup time of like four seconds, so surely somewhere around here has gotta be a single red rupee. Yeah, you know where this is going. I ran around my own house, checked the tunnels. I even worked the fields. Didn't earn a dime, by the way. Also, I named myself Ink G, and I thought that was kind of funny, and I don't remember why. Anyways, Monkey shows up, and children want to beat it with sticks for some reason. So we're forced to travel through an entire jungle where Child and Monkey are in prison together. Naturally, they become best friends. Link does manual labor again and passes out from exhaustion, so now he's a wolf. Okay, pause. I could share every detail of this journey from my prison break to multiple home invasions, but the bottom line I'm trying to make here is even with the help from monkeys and spiritual guides, it wasn't until I reached the fourth temple and blew up a random hole in a wall that I would finally discover a red rupee. And at this point, I had practically forgotten all about my search. I was just playing the damn game. Even though it took me quite a while to finish up Twilight Princess, I would have done it a thousand times over this next entry any day. Gee, it sure is boring around here. Yes, unfortunately, the Zelda CDI games do feature red rupees, and I felt it was a necessary evil to complete this task. The rupee gods had other plans, though, because no matter what I did, I could not get these games to run on any sort of very legal systems. But somehow, some way, I eventually was able to gather enough dark magic and get these games running. I don't know if it was better or worse that after all that setup, both Link the Face of Evil and Zelda the Wand of Gamelon had red rupees in the very first minute. I would say this is the least satisfying thing I've ever done, but there's one title coming later that might be worse. Phantom Hourglass turned out to be a much needed refresher. 
Aside from that part, most of my time spent here was wandering around the island ruining the throwable object population and expertly solving dangerous puzzles. Yes. It wasn't long after getting my sword that I would accidentally bash my head into a tree, spawning a gorgeous red rupee. Unfortunately, bashing my head in spirit tracks didn't work out the same way. I was too embarrassed to stick around after that, so I changed my name and fled town aboard the train. I might have almost ran over an animal or two, but I think I could probably do this in real life. Soon enough, we'd arrive at Hyrule Castle. Inside waiting for us is Princess Zelda, and her most trusted advisor, definitely not evil guy. Only very normal people would wear two hats like that. Why'd he do that? After Zelda makes fun of the outfit that she literally just gave me, she requests that we sneak her outside the castle and onto my train. My past record of rescuing princesses is subpar at best, but all it takes is a few large boulders to the brain and we're looking good. That is until definitely not evil guy shows up and throws away two perfectly good hats like some kind of monster. Also, Zelda's soul is stolen, which is a bummer. Before we've got time to process everything, we're right back at the castle and Zelda is a ghost. I once again offer to help her, mostly because I'm the only person alive who can actually see her, and we're off on our grand quest to save the world. Well, at least I'm not leaving her in the sewers this time. Skyward Sword. A Link Between Worlds. If you thought what I had to do to play Four Swords was sad, just know it can always get worse. Triforce Heroes gets a bad rap for being a jumbled, quirky, fashionable mess, but honestly, it's a fun game if you can look past an abomination or two. Unlike Four Swords, I actually am able to play a single player mode, but because everything in the game is centered around the power of three, I'm forced to work with these hollow, lifeless statues. The first stage is literally just one simple puzzle, and it took me far longer than I care to admit. Some platforming and extra expert gameplay later, one of these blobby guys dropped the red rupee. But I wasn't quite satisfied yet, so I forced a few hostages, just kidding, they're called people, to play the multiplayer with me. And the very best part of this was that it was faster when I did it all by myself. Thanks guys. The Great Plateau is a big place, right? So it's kind of unbelievable for someone to suggest they checked everywhere they possibly could. So just keep that in mind because I checked everywhere I possibly could. No stone went unturned and no barrel left unbroken. I opened chests, I fought enemies, spoke to strange old men. I even found a lizard. Hmm. Red. I wasn't going to be stopped by guardian lasers, giant cliffs, or frozen terribly cold hilltops. Every spot of the plateau I could think to check was scavenged, including the shrines. But this did mean that we could leave this area and have a lot more places to explore. Unfortunately, that means we have a lot more places to explore. So I wandered around the ancient, decrepit spots of Hyrule. My favorite spot was when I visited this enemy camp and just sort of got poked and died. Or when I tried to ride a horse. I even went to central Hyrule and attempted to invade Ganon's castle before getting scared and trying something else. You don't know true desperation until you experience the epic highs and lows of finding a bunch of rocks without rupees under them. My inevitable solution to my quest was not thanks to me, but thanks to a bunch of strangers on the internet. Last time I mentioned I had very rarely stumbled across one of these creatures in my entire time of playing. It just so happens that hitting one causes a bunch of rupees to come flying out. This being my only real lead, I traveled east to Kakariko Village. The forest nearby is the closest place I could remember at possibly being home to one of these guys, and it turns out I was right. A couple fire arrows and a singed Money is all it takes to finish up our time here. You'd think a game all about rupees would get me excited, but I'm already regretting every action I've ever taken to get here. Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land begins with our hero Tingle, who is sad, depressed, lonely, and in the process of getting neuralinked with God. Don't kill yourself, collect rupees instead. Eventually, we're persuaded enough by this deity to follow its instructions, and before long, the voice is revealed to be Uncle Rupee. I always knew this guy existed, but being in his presence fills me with overwhelming fear. Basically, Uncle Rupee promises a life filled with money, food, women. All this and more can be mine, so long as I sell my soul to him. <laughs> 
you had me at overwhelming fear. With a new suit equipped and my identity completely taken from me, I was prepared for one incredible adventure. And I'll just be honest with you guys, this red rupee right here is the closest I was ever going to get. I just couldn't do it. After 90 minutes of some of the most bizarre, goofy gameplay I've ever experienced in my life, I was given no choice. I did manage to get this lady to give me 20 rupees, which is basically an invisible red rupee, but without a single real red rupee in sight, I gave up. I decided that Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land was something more than just finding one specific rupee color. I felt like if I was going to play this game for another second longer, I needed to make it all the way through. So if anyone out there wants to watch and see what horrors away from me in Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land, make sure to let me know and make sure you apologize. The end of our journey was finally near. Friends were made, actions were regretted, and all of it has led to our last and biggest game Tears of the Kingdom. Starting beneath Hyrule Castle, I thought for sure this red aura would lead me to some treasure, but all I found was a nightmare demon that stole my rupee holding arm. At least I've got Zelda by my side to help. Right, Zelda? <laughs> not my fault this time. Instead of the Great Plateau, we've got the Great Sky Island, which is just as difficult to escape. But we've still got our fair share of rocks to search under, shrines to tackle, and quests that... Guys, I don't think I should help with this one. Completing the first shrine grants us the Ultra Hand ability, so now we can move and build whatever we want to solve puzzles. What did I just make, you ask? It's a bridge. I can't believe that worked. My best shot here was to progress through the Great Sky Island like normal, which I guess meant losing my only feasible way of reaching the next shrine. Don't worry, I've got an idea. I specialize in bridges. I managed to safely make it across, which meant I could carry out my revenge plot and finish our next shrine. It wouldn't be long before I had the chance to make another boat. Turns out it's pretty easy, and I found a Korok looking for help. I attached him to my contraption to bring him with me, but I didn't realize until I put all the pieces together that I had strapped him to the bottom of this death ride. Surely he'll be okay. See, there was nothing to worry about. Using my bravery and intellect, I was able to scale to the next level of this mountain. Unfortunately, it was freezing cold up here, and I'm naked. I stalled my depleting HP with all the fruits and kebabs I could, and eventually I found my next step. What you see is potential firewood to stay warm. What I see is another opportunity for Big Bridge. Almost as if fate itself guided me here, there were spicy peppers and a fireplace ready to keep me toasty, leading directly to our next shrine. As I left this snowy hell, I found some warm pants, so thanks for that, and I soared down to the Temple of Time. All that was left here was to complete the final shrine of the island, so I completed the final shrine of the island. Now, we were able to leave this place and I knew exactly where we were going. Falling down to the beautiful land of Hyrule, all we have to do is head north for a bit to find another blue bunny. A single shot to its small brain and there it is. The final and most stunning red rupee. But I don't want it. We did that in Breath of the Wild and I have a much better idea. Further north is a man of complete utmost importance Addison. Desperate to keep the wind from blowing down this sign, he holds on for dear life. Luckily, I know just what to build. It's perfect. As Addison lets go of the sign, it stays standing. And as a thanks for a job well done, we are given our final red rupee for real this time. 20 something games later and a red rupee has been discovered in every single one of them. This has been a journey of regret, despair, and misfortune. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Thank you to Sintoki, Lyra Hubble, Wayward Rosalind, Brennan Grissel, and all my other patron subscribers and YouTube supporters. You all made this video possible. Thank you so much. Gold rupees? I'm coming for you.